Hi guys, today we are going to make our own illuminated letters and I thought it would be fun to explore using the Armenian alphabet for my project to celebrate my Armenian friends in the community. I don't know how to speak Armenian, but I do have a background in typography, which is the design and the study of letter forms. <clears throat> now, I think that the characters of the Armenian alphabet are especially beautiful and interesting. But if you're more comfortable using the English alphabet, that's okay too. Included with this lesson is a PDF that you can download which contains the Armenian alphabet, the English alphabet, as well as a page of design ideas which you can use for inspiration when it comes time to decorate your illuminated letter. But we'll talk about that more later. So, what is an illuminated letter? It's the big letter at the beginning of a story in a book or a paragraph. Sometimes there could be a picture or an illustration along with the letter. Um, and these letters, they can be found in illuminated manuscripts, which are handmade books. Mostly they're about religious subjects dating from um, as far back as 500 AD to the 16th century. So they're pretty old. Most of them were created in Europe, but there were also many that were created by people from Armenia in the Armenian language. Here's a couple of examples of English and Armenian manuscripts that I wanted to share with you. Illuminated letters were decorated with gold and silver or precious stones, which is why they are called illuminated. The word illuminate means to light up, which is the effect of the decorative letters in these manuscripts. They brought the manuscripts to life and they give special meaning to the words that are with it. Now, because there were no printing presses back then, all of these books had to be written by hand, usually by monks in monasteries or nuns in convents. The manuscripts were written by people called scribes, and the illuminated letters were created by people called illuminators. As you can imagine, it was a very slow process, long process too, and it was pretty expensive, so only the wealthy could afford to have one. Okay, let's talk about our project for today. You're going to need a 8.5 by 11 or so sized piece of construction paper or kind of heavy white paper. You're going to need crayons or magic markers or colored pencils or paint or whatever you have on hand. Today I'm going to be using crayons and magic markers. No matter what, you need to make sure that you bring out any of your metallic sparkly art materials that you have because after all, that's what illuminated letters are all about. Their sparkle, their bling. I'm going to use some metallic glitter glue for my project. I especially like these because they're really sparkly. Okay, now since we're not creating an illuminated letter for a book per se, I wanted you to make your letter about you. Think about what things that you are interested in and what things that you like to, to do. And I want you to try and use those images on the um, illuminated letter that you create. You could also just use Zentangle patterns, which are always fun. I love Zentangle. Um, and there's a few ideas for that on the design sheet as well. Now, aside from making a letter about yourself, you could also Make one as a greeting card cover for someone that you know that'll be celebrating a birthday or maybe Mother's Day to show them how much you care for and appreciate them. I just took my illuminated letter and cut it out around the scalloped edge there and put it on a piece of red construction paper. And then for the inside, I just attached a piece of white paper for my greeting. And I did use a glue stick for this because it doesn't make the paper kind of schlumpy. But anyway, all right, that's just a suggestion. All right, are you ready to make some art? I know I am, so let's go. Okay, to start with, I 
using a ruler to create a guide on the side of my paper for the box. And you'll notice that a lot of illuminated letters have a square rectangular box around the letter. Now I'm going to be doing an Armenian letter V, which kind of looks like an English letter Y, except for the tail kind of shoots out to the right on the bottom. So I'm starting with that long, skinny part of the letter first. And I used a blue box around the letters to give you a reference point on where to place your letter in your square, just as a, as a guide. Now you'll notice that this letter has a little table on the very top. In typography, that's called a serif. Anytime there's a little table or a little kind of a bump on the top or the bottom, that's called a serif. And after I got done sketching out my letter, I outlined it with a heavy black marker so it'd be easier for you to see. Um, here I'm showing you the three pages of the PDF that were included. And this is the design idea page. After I finished drawing the outline of the letter and the box, I decided to go with birds. I love these little birds. And I wanted mine to sing. So I left his beak open, which is basically two little triangles. Here's a nest, which is an oval inside of another oval shape and some leaves, or a leaf. Um, <clears throat> now here's a strategy for drawing a flower. You draw your center point, and then you just draw sort of triangular shapes coming out from the middle point of your flower. Here's another little bird. And another flower. I'm doing this one a slightly different way. They kind of look like pinwheels, don't they? Now on this one I decided to try and do a circle and then you'll notice I kind of changed my mind and went back and erased it, but you could do it that way too with a circle. Um, whatever works for you. And then last of all, you got to add a butterfly and one more leaf. This is sort of my celebration of spring. So after I sketched out my shapes, I outlined them with a black marker. You can use whatever color marker that you have if you want to. You can make them uh, the colors of the Armenian flag, which are blue, red, and gold, and yellow. Beautiful colors. And again, this is just a suggestion. You, I really want you to pick imagery that is about you personally. Um, I like flowers and birds. It's just one idea. Now, I do think it's important to mention that illuminated letters almost always have a border of some kind. And I'm going to look at my design sheet and use a few of these shapes from the design idea page. Here's a little corkscrew thing, kind of looks like a pigtail or a spring um, for the top and the bottom. And then there's a scallop shape I decided to use for the sides. Uh, <clears throat> These are kind of zentangly, aren't they? All right. Now, if you want your letter to look like it has depth and dimension, you can create a drop shadow, which is what I just did on just the left side of my letter. All you have to do is create another line. And then before I start coloring, I decided to remove my pencil sketch marks, but you don't have to. All right. 
So I started out sketching or drawing rather coloring with markers. This is a water-based marker. Any little bluebirds. And some little bluebird eggs with a crayon. Now here I'm using a metallic gold crayon to create that sparkly look on the next nest. Now I also wanted to show you what a real hummingbird nest looks like. When I moved into my house, the previous owners left this behind. I think it probably blew out of a tree branch or something, but it's really tiny and I bet only you could fit a few little jelly bean sized eggs in there. Really tiny, but that's really cool and I wanted to share that with you. I've often seen hummingbirds using spider webs and little tiny pieces of moss and things to create their nests with. Okay, now I colored my letter in purple, but if you wanted to, you could easily put Zentangle patterns in your Armenian or your illuminated letter to make it look more interesting. I also wanted to show you how you can use the point or the side of one of those markers to create thin and wide lines. Okay. Final touches. If you decide to mix crayons and markers, make sure you use the markers first because the crayons, if you use the crayons first, the marker doesn't work well on top of the crayons because the crayons are made with wax. Here's my sparkly glue, my glitter glue, and I'm using it for just a few touches here and there. And then I decided I wanted to create a border for my letter in silver. And then I think I changed to, oh, I put some white eyes on my little birds and made my eggs darker. And then I switched to gold glitter glue for some detail on the border. And to finish, I used the glitter glue for the outside edge of my border, as you see here. You can do it however you want. Okay, well, thanks for joining me today. I had a great time. I hope you enjoyed it too, and I'll see you next time.